Hello everyone, welcome to my course and in this module we are discussing purchasing model and service tiers in Azure SQL. There are two types of purchasing model in Azure SQL, DTU based purchasing model and vCore based purchasing model. Now under the DTU we have three service tiers, basic service tier, standard and premium service tier. And the vCore based purchasing model we have general purpose, business critical and hyperscale service tier. Now let's understand the DTU. DTU means database transaction unit. It's a measurement unit where you can measure your performance in a DTU instead of CPU and memory. Each DTU level and service tier provides some predictable performance. It means that higher the DTU, you will get more performance. It's a bundle measure of compute storage and IO resources. And the customer who want simple pre-configured resource option, they can go with the DTU purchasing model. Now in the vCore based purchasing model, the memory and CPU defined in a vCore and it depends on the hardware generation and the service tier. Now vCore based purchasing model allow you to register your own premises SQL Server licenses to reduce the cost using Azure Hybrid Benefit. You can independent to choose compute and storage in a vCore based purchasing model. And the customer who value a flex flexibility, control and transparency, they can go with the vCore based purchasing model. Now depend on the service tier, your MDF, LDF and TEMDB files are stored in Azure. For example, in a general purpose service tier, the MDF and LDF files stored in Azure Blob Storage while a uh, TEMDB stored in a local SSD. Now DTU based purchasing model provide three types of service tier, basic, standard and premium. And here there are certain properties. So if you go with the maximum backup retention period for basic, it's a seven days. And for standard and premium service tier, it's a 35 days. All the service tier provide the 99.99% availabilities. And if you, if you consider certain SQL features like column store indexing are not provided by the basic service tier and in-memory OLTP also not supported by the basic and standard service tier but it's supported by the premium service tier. Now let's understand the first basic service tier. In the basic service tier, maximum you can allocate 5 DTUs and maximum you can store 2 GB of data. Maximum concurrent request 30 and maximum concurrent sessions are 300. So if you have very small application, then you can go with the basic service tier. Now in the standard service tier, we have different compute sites starting from S0 to L, S12. Now depending on the compute, compute size, below property are changed. Now let's take a maximum compute size where maximum DTU are support 3000s and uh, maximum concurrent requests are 6000 and maximum concurrent session are 30000. In a premium service tier, again, we have a different compute size starting from P1 to P15. If you go with the P15, where you can maximum DTU support by 4000 and maximum storage are 4 TB. Uh, and in the standard service tier, you can maximum you can store 1 TB of data. Let's go to the vCore based purchasing model service tier. We have three service tier, general purpose service tier, business critical and hyperscale. Now in the general purpose, most of the business workload are support the general purpose service tier. Maximum you can store 4 TB of data and uh, backups are stored in a geo redundant storage. It means that in case of any data center unavailability, you request for the backup. If you go with the business critical, there are certain enterprise application which require a highest IO. They can go with the business critical. In the business critical, again, you store maximum 4 TB of data. Now in business critical, you get one read scale replica and use this read scale replica for the reporting purpose. Here backups are again stored in the geo redundant storage. And a hyperscale, the entire concept is different. Uh, architecture is also different that I am going to cover in the coming module. 
in the hyperscale you can support 100 tb of data and you will get 0 to 4 read scale replica means based on your configuration you will get read scale replica maximum you can get 4 read scale replica so in the demo section we are going to create a database based on the dtu based purchasing model as well as v core based purchasing model see you in the demo hello everyone welcome to my course and in this video i will show you how to select a purchasing model and service tiers in azure sql now in azure sql database you have two types of purchasing model dtu based purchasing model and v core based purchasing model so let's understand how we can configure so for that let's create a database go to the sql server database and create a new after that here i'm not going to change my resource group and i'm not going to change my server i'm going to create a new database db dev2 and inside this we have an option compute and storage let's configure this compute and storage now here you can see in the dtu based purchasing model we have three service tier basic standard and premium now in the basic service tier you can configure a 50 gb of database so if you have very less demanding workload then you can go with this configuration in the standard service tiers now most of our development server and test server are in the standard service tier where you can configure a database up to 250 gb uh, up to 1 tb sorry up to 1 tb and based on your workload so in your database workload you can define the dtus now what is dtu you know that right dtu is a database transaction unit and it's the it's a measurement unit and in the premium service tier is basically used for the production environment uh, here also you can configure up to 4 tb okay but in the premium tier you have a facility about read scale out now let's understand what do you mean by read scale out it means that the microsoft will create a secondary replica only for the select queries or you can say only for the read intensive queries now whenever you configure a read intensive query for your report purpose the in the background your query will run on the secondary server so you can reduce the io okay now how to define uh, or how to find your database workload so for that you have to configure the performance counter in your server and identify the workload now in the v core based purchasing model again you have a three service tier general purpose service tier hyperscale and the business critical now in the general purpose service tiers you have a facility to choose a hardware as well as you have a facility to choose a v core now this model is a v core based purchasing model now it is a similar to our on premises sql server now here you can select up to atv core and this uh, service tier support database up to 4 tb okay and here there is one option called serverless options so now let's understand the serverless service tiers now in the serverless service tiers are charged based on the second and you can configure this service tier where your database workload are unpredictable okay it means that let's say your uh, in the entire one day your database used only two hours three hours or maybe only 10 hours at that time you can configure a serverless configuration and you have to pay only for the active hours now here also there is a configuration called auto post delay it means that your database will not get any active connection in the one hour period of time the database will automatically inactive okay and here you can support a database up to 500 gb in the hyperscale uh, service tier your database support up to 100 tb and here the configuration is same 
but in the hyperscale you can create up to four secondary replica now this is secondary replica you can use for disaster recovery as well as you can use for the read intensive queries and for the business critical if you have a very business critical application or enterprise level application then you can configure in the business critical service tier now in the business critical again you have facility for read scale out and there will be no charge for this if you enable it or not disable it so there is no extra charge for this read scale out and in the vcore based purchasing model you have one more facility where you can save a 55 percent of money where you can surrender your on-premises sql server license okay so for that you have to click yes and you have to confirm that you have a sql server license okay with sa to apply a azure hybrid benefit let me select basic service tier okay the charge will be the 359 rupees per month and uh, here in the additional setting here i'm going to select the sample database now uh, if i go with this option microsoft will automatically restore the adventure work database for practice purpose so review and create and just wait okay let me change the configuration again apply okay so let's review it again okay now 359 rupees let's create now the deployment is started let's wait for five minutes so now the deployment is completed let me refresh my database folder and my database is created so let's quickly check so inside that all the adventure work tables are available yes let's quickly run the query yes so all the data are available how to choose a purchasing model for your database that part will cover under the migration module where you can migrate your own premises database to azure so see you in the next video